away. What was it like for you to see the growth of some of your guys, the Kyle Quins, the Tobias, the guys like that who made strides this season? Well, I think it was uh, it was good to see. You know, I think if you look back on a year, um, I think we made some some positive strides. You know, strides in the right direction. I think uh, clearly the the win loss record was not very good. Um, we're all aware of that. We all know that has to improve. But I think there's some deeper layers to it, and I think that uh, if you look at the way uh, our guys competed consistently, I thought the spirit of the team was pretty good. I thought the spirit, competitive spirit of the guys remained uh, consistent throughout the year, which I think is a good sign. And then you look at some things, you know, individually that, that guys improved upon, which I think they can take into the off season and hopefully into next year. Um, and I also think guys got better collectively, learning how to uh, really execute the, the different systems we try to run on the offensive and defensive side and, um, and just kind of getting familiar with each other in the NBA game, really. Uh, so I think those are, those are all things that will continue to hopefully improve moving forward. Rob, you focused on the draft last year, this year. What can you tell fans to expect next year? More of the same. You know, I think we'll, uh, we'll continue to, to try to do our work to identify the best ways to improve the team. And uh, what we don't want to do is skip any steps. So I think we'll be uh, methodical. We'll continue to be uh, very strategic in how we add to the team, how we improve the team. Uh, the draft is certainly one area to do that. I also think that uh, we'll continue to be opportunistic and actively exploring what options exist in free agency and trade. So uh, we're not we're not bound to, to just one basket. We're we're looking for uh, ways to improve all the way around. What, what isn't there a fine line between <clears throat> incremental and being aggressive? How do you weigh that? Yeah, you know, Brian. I think um, we want to grow organically, and you know, we want to grow progressive fashion that, that doesn't necessarily accelerate things too quickly, but at the same time, we know we have to get better. Um, so I think, I think there is a balance there, um, but I, I do think that, that the way to finding a healthy balance is just staying disciplined and trusting the way we go about analyzing things, trusting the way we go about evaluating our players and our team and where we think we're at, uh, and then making the best decisions we can moving forward. You're about to add Two, two lottery, you have two lottery picks. You've always said you don't want to be too young, you don't want to be too old. Do you think about adding some veteran pieces with those young guys to, to make sure you're not too young? Yeah, I think you have to be careful. You know, like we've spoken about in the past, I think you need to really make sure that uh, there's a balance with sort of the, the age combination of the roster. So um, we'll try to try to stay somewhere in the middle. I think we want to try to avoid the extremes. What level of, of free agent do you will your team possibly pursue? Not sure yet. You know, I think we'll, uh, we'll look to add to the team via free agency. Uh, a lot of that depends on uh, who's available, what's realistic, what's unrealistic. But we'll do our, our due diligence, and we'll, uh, we'll be actively exploring ways to improve the team. So I think we will uh, look to add something in free agency. I'm not sure quite yet what that will be, Josh. Seeing Victor develop over this year, knowing you have two lottery picks that were just mentioned, does it make what you went through any easier, knowing that you could possibly get some guys that can help you on the court like Victor did? Well, you know, it's uh, it's never easy when you when you lose as many games as we've lost this year. And so I, I don't think, uh, you know, we don't want to be doing that very much moving forward. Uh, we're happy with, with the way Victor played for sure. He had a, had a heck of a year, um, and we're proud of him for that. And, you know, our job as it relates to the draft is to try to find players we can really help us in a way that makes sense on the floor, but, but also off the floor as well. So um, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but you know, I think hopefully uh, in the draft we'll be able to find someone that can help us. We, we, we've heard you use the, the word process. Really? <laughs> to, <laughs> just a little, a little, a little bit. Uh, two years in, for fans, how far along do you feel in the process? You know, I think, I think we're on plan. I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, you know us. We, we don't typically like to put concrete timeline on things. Um, but I do expect to see some improvement next year. I, I think we all do. And we expect to be playing more meaningful games next year than we did this year or the year previous to this year. So um, just continuing to grow, continuing to get better, uh, continuing to believe in the process and to believe in the plan. And uh, I think if you asked all the guys and if you asked our coaches and anyone in our organization, there's a, a 
true belief and a real conviction to what we're doing. And I think that can be a pretty powerful thing. Where do veterans like Jameer and Aaron fit in with this process, considering how young this team is and may even get younger? Yeah, good question. You know, I think, uh, you know, Jameer's a great pro, and he'll continue to be a great pro. Um, the same for Aaron. You know, these guys are important. It's important to have uh, veterans who set an example. It's important to have guys who um, have been around and can share you know, some of the wisdom and experience that comes along with being in the NBA for a, for a while. And, and both Jameer and Aaron have that. So uh, we, we like having them around. What's your thoughts on Jacques' job over the two years that you've been here? You know, very, very pleased with Jacques and, and pleased with uh, the job he and his staff have done. You know, I think. Uh, it's not an easy task to come in and, and try to build a, a team from the ground up. And, and, and Jacques has been um, incredibly consistent in his approach, in his message, and in the way he treats the guys. And I think, you know, you heard a little bit uh, of him yesterday talking about putting guys in different situations to challenge them. You know, how do you respond as a starter? How do you respond coming off the bench? How do you respond mentally in, in different ways? And I think his ability to challenge guys sometimes subtly, sometimes not so subtle. I think it's good for the group, and it's good for the development of the guys. And um, I think all of our guys got better this year. Uh, I think that's a real testament to, to Jacques' approach. And, uh, you know, he always puts the organization first, and the best interest of the organization first, and, and that doesn't go unnoticed. Rob Jacques has talked about because these young guys have played so many minutes, because they've been on the floor at the end of the games, that maybe they'll speed up the learning curve, that, that maybe you can be better quicker because these guys have been through the fire. Do you believe that and see that theory? Yeah, no no question, uh, John. I think that, uh, you know, there's no substitute for real NBA experience. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't really replicate that type of experience on a practice court or in a D-League game. Uh, those, are, those are true experiences that I hope and we all hope will, will help accelerate the learning curve, and that's certainly part of the plan. Yes. Did sitting the starters for as much as Jock did in the last three games harm the, the growth of a winning culture? You know, Josh, I don't think so. You know, I think uh, as we looked at the tail end of the season, um, we're about development. And the one thing that we always do is compete as hard as we can. And, uh, you know, I think we did that. I think the last couple of games was a chance to give some guys who, um, quite frankly, have been, been busted in their behinds in practice all year long and, and never wavering, their effort never wavered, and we felt it was important. Uh, we want to be a team, and it was important toward the end of the year to get a lot of minutes to those guys who uh, otherwise maybe didn't play as much as they would play. Rob, you've seen some college kids this year, apparently. What yes, kind of, What true. kind of draft is this? I mean, we hear it's it's this, it's that, it's great, it's maybe it's not so good. What You've seen all these guys now. What do you What do you think? Well, I can't comment on players specifically, right. um, but we think the draft's a good draft. You know, uh, we feel like we'll be able to find players who can help us. You know, where we're selecting, and uh, sometimes you can't say that about a draft. So overall, we, we think it's a good draft. Um, would last year be one of those drafts where you might not be able to say that it was as good as others? Um, you could make that argument. I think, yeah. What what position within the guard framework? You your Probably both positions. You know, I think our stance uh, on the, the infamous question remains the same. He, he's a guard, and he may play some some one. He may play some two. Um, we feel like he's best served as a guard in the backcourt and doing all the things that, that we believe he can do. But Rob, can't that change depending on who you get? No question. Yeah, everything's fluid. You know, we're uh, we have to be adaptable and. and have to be open and willing to evolve, you know, as, as different things come up. You're, um, since Dwight left, I don't think it's a secret that your attendance is down 20%. Um, the record, obviously. Having that one guy, do you need, I mean, obviously Miami is a totally different animal, but do you need that one guy? Yeah, we see Indiana with Paul George to build that team around? To, do you need that superstar? You know, I think it's a good question. I think it comes down to want versus need. I think if you ask that question every team, they'd say, sure, yeah, we'd love to have a superstar. Do you need to have one? I'm not convinced of that. You know, I think that 
Uh, if you can truly build a team that, that works together and plays for each other and has some depth and, and identity and uh, plays discipline, you know, you can be highly competitive in this league. So um, we're open to both avenues. Rob, you had your own uh, external and internal benchmarks set for this team going into this season. You had four pegs in the blue attitude, approach, I've effort, yeah. and consistency. Do you still go by those four, uh, four pegs? And how would you evaluate your team in that regard? Yes, we do. Um, I would say that I think that we improve in all those areas. And when I say improve, I think um, stayed consistent. You know, I think a lot of the, the growth we saw from some of our guys this year had to do with consistency and how they approach the game. And you really have to embrace consistency. It's not something that is given to you or just comes naturally. It's, it's part of, a, I think, a work ethic and an ambition that you have to have to attain it. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we graded out well in those areas. Those are going to be areas we continue to, to stress. And we'll probably continue to, to raise the bar um, on how much we expect that and to what level. But for this year, yeah, I think we made progress in those areas. Where did you see progress, and where do you think he still needs to progress uh, with regard to Nick? Yeah, you know, I think we saw a lot of progress with uh, how he approached the game. You know, a lot of what we had challenged Nick coming into this season was to continue to be aggressive, continue to find ways to um, assert yourself from the beginning of the game. And I thought that he began to play with um, a heightened physicality and an assertiveness, which I think is a good thing. We expect that to continue. And then overall, just confidence. You know, confidence is an important uh, piece to the puzzle for any young player. And, you know, we have a lot of young players on our team, Nick being one of them. And we feel like his, his confidence, um, you know, grew exponentially as the season went on. So we're pleased with that. Rob, are, are, are you of the mind that you need to put all your assets on the table to make, to do whatever you have to do, whether it be it number one pick, number 11 pick? Yeah, players. Yeah, you know, Brian. Yeah, uh, you know, we're again, we're going to stay flexible. You know, if that's what it takes to, to do what we feel is in the best interest of the team and, and what we need to do to improve the team, then you know, absolutely, we're, we're open to, to anything. I don't think we're in a position not to be open to, to that type of scenario. Because some people would paint you as the draft guy, <laughs> but but if. If opportunities come along for a for a veteran guy or a young veteran guy, for whatever reason, a team wants to move him. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna discriminate against uh, ways to improve the team. You know, whether it be through the draft or through trade or free agency or uh, you know, if we can trade our, our our columnist or our beat writer for someone, maybe we'll look to do that too. So <laughs> we're definitely open to anything. Yeah, Josh, you're out of here. <laughs> uh. It's early. Does Pat go to the lottery with his ping pong balls again? Or? You know, we, we don't know yet, um, but that's certainly certainly an option. Where did you see growth from Victor within the season? You know, I think that's a good question. I think, you know, at a certain point, the game started to slow down um, for Vic. And what I mean by that is just the, the, the flow, the rhythm, the speed of the game. I think um, for any rookie, sometimes it's – for most rookies – it's a challenge to adapt to that type of speed, and, and the game's different. So I think just the way he processed the game, the way he, um, you know, didn't allow teams to speed him up as the year went along. So uh, those would be the two biggest things. And, and then just his confidence, you know, once you get a chance to, to go through the league and play against everybody a couple times, you get familiar with uh, what teams are trying to do to stop you and what maybe you can do to um, improve upon the last time you played against a certain team. So. Uh, mostly his confidence, mostly his confidence and just familiarity with, with what we're trying to do. When you look at a, when you look at a guy like Tobias, Rob, is how far is he away from being a complete player, basically on the defensive end of the floor? Is is that where he needs to make? Yeah, you know, yeah, another good question. You know, I think uh, you know all of our guys have areas that, that they need to improve in, um, whether they played in the league for one year or ten years. And, you know, I think Tobias, uh, you know, he's such a worker and, and is so prideful in, in using the offseason to get better. So uh, my expectation, our expectation will be, you know, he will focus on the defensive end of the floor for sure, just like all of our guys will. Victor in the summer league? Yeah, Vic will play in the summer league. I don't know if he'll play every mm -hmm. game, but, but mm -hmm. he'll be there.